Math 230, Quest to College, I'm Joe Vasta, and today we'll be covering section 3.1, which is called Statements. This is all part of chapter 3, which is logic, and logic is what the math world is built on. So before we get into that, here's the puzzle for this lecture. If A, B, B, C, C, D, and D, E are common English words, what familiar word is D, C, A, B, E? So there's a substitution going on here, and um, perhaps A, B is the word, is a two-letter word, maybe it's two, T, O. And then B, C would have to be a two-letter word that starts with O, you know, because it's O over here, too. But maybe that's not it. I don't know. So figure this out if you want. Let's get back to logic. We'll get the answer at the end. So um, logic is a method of reasoning. You may have heard this said in another class. All men are mortal. Socrates was a man. Therefore, Socrates was mortal. And we can draw a little Venn diagram and, or an Euler diagram to um, see this reasoning. This is called deductive reasoning. And before we get into some of that more complicated stuff, we're going to start with this definition of a statement. A statement is a sentence that is either true or false. So our examples, that we're going to do here, is we are asking if this is a statement. So statement question mark. Okay, so let's go ahead and put a sentence down. Today is Tuesday. So this is our problem. It almost seems like we're not in a math class anymore. So here's problem number one. Today is Tuesday. And we are supposed to see if this is a statement. Well, this is either true or false. And I don't know what day you're watching this video. For some of you, it will be true. For some of you, this will be false. But it can't be true and false at the same time. So this does fit the description. It is a statement. The answer is yes. And these are the kinds of problems you'll um, be encountering in your homework. Problem number two. What time is it? Well, can we put a truth value on this? What time is it? True. No, we can't. We cannot put a truth value on a question. So we're going to say for this one, is this a statement? No. Let's continue. Problem number three. Finish your dinner. Finish your dinner. True or false? Can we say true or false on that? Well, no, we can't. So finish your dinner is not a statement. We're going to put no. In fact, that happens to be a command. So a command cannot be a statement. Let's go ahead and do another one. One plus one equals three. You never thought that your math teacher would write that in a lecture for a math class. But we're asking, is this a statement? Well, yeah, this is a sentence that is false. So it is a statement. The answer is yes. Now, I'm not saying yes, 1 plus 1 equals 3. I'm saying yes to the question, is this a statement? The statement happens to be false. And we'll get into truth values in the next section 3.2. OK, the next one. You just hit your thumb with the hammer. So maybe you can write out the phrase you would say. Let's just kind of write something down. 
you say, crap. Okay. Is that a statement? No, that's an exclamation. So we're going to say no on that. So that's pretty much how to do the first problems in your homework. And um, a statement, let me just put it right here. This is different. From questions, like we saw in problem two, commands, like we saw in problem three, and exclamations. Like we saw right here in problem number five. Now what I'm going to do, I'll do it in a different color, maybe purple. You could just skip ahead because this is really going to upset some people. Problem number six. This statement is false. Okay, is this a statement? Well, you might be fooled by this problem because it is a little confusing. It does have the word statement in it, so maybe it is a statement. But let's just see this sentence. If this sentence is true, the statement is false, then it is also false. So this thing would have to be true and false at the same time, which does not make sense. Look, this says either true or false. So it can't be both of them because of this either here. And we'll talk about more about or later on. So this guy right here is not a statement. It's a bit of a contradiction right there, problem number six. So let's um, continue in 3.1. And like this here. I've got to get something here. Some pieces of paper. I'd forgotten about that. Okay. So our goal in logic, and you can see right through that piece of paper. That's beautiful. Okay. Our goal is to simplify complicated logical arguments. And um, what we want to do now is we want to take a look at s something called an operator. The following words are operators. And, or, not, but. Here's an operator, if, then. Either, or, we saw that in the last definition. If and only if. Now this list goes on. I only did some of the popular ones. That's what an operator is. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is look at the definition of a simple statement. A simple statement is a statement that does not contain an operator. Let's put an example of a simple statement. How about the sky is blue. So there is an example of a simple statement. It doesn't have and, or, not, but, if, then, etc. Let's take a look at our next definition. A compound statement is made by combining simple statements with one or more operators. Let's take a look at an example of a compound statement. Roses are red. Now that in itself is a simple statement, so I'll continue. And violets are blue. Okay, so we have the operator and, so this makes this statement a compound statement. 
Okay, and sometimes and and or are called connectives or connectors that connect two simple statements together. Now, what we're going to start doing, math people like to ruin logic, and once again, it does not feel like you are looking at a math lecture. It looks like we're maybe in an English class or something like that, you know, because we have these definitions and our examples are sentences. Um, but we are going to ruin logic a little. We're going to take statements and we're going to assign letters to them, just like we assign letters to values in a math class. And that's what we're going to do. So let's see if I can get the next piece of paper here. So I'm going to start off with another example, not the roses are red, violets are blue, but this one right here. Statement P is I have a penny in my pocket. Statement Q is I have a quarter in my pocket. And what we're going to do is we're going to look at some definitions. Okay, so here's the definition of conjunction. The operator and is called the conjunction. It is denoted by this little symbol, okay? So some of you might call that a caret, or it's an upside down V. And so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to write this out right here. I'm going to write out my statements up here, P, then I'm going to put this symbol here, and then we have a Q right there. So in your homework, they'll ask you to take what you see here with the symbols and translate it to words. So our translation could be this. I have a penny in my pocket. And I have a quarter in my pocket. And am I going to fit it here? Yes. Pocket. I just make the font a little smaller. So there it is. There is P and Q. Now because they have the same sentence structure, you see a lot of the same sentence structure, um, when they ask us to do a conjunction, which is the fancy word for and, you could on this example say, I have a penny and a quarter in my pocket. I have a penny and a quarter. in my pocket. And so there it is. So you can shorten writing it out if the um, both of the simple statements have um, the same sentence structure. If it was, I have a penny in my pocket and the sky is blue, then you would just have to write it all out. So we have this and and some of you might go, I'm never going to remember that that's the symbol for and. Well, let's take a look at this symbol here. This symbol is sometimes referred to as a cap because it looks like something you might wear. No, maybe it wouldn't be something you might wear, but they just call it a cap. And if you deface it a little and go like that, then it looks like a capital A, which might remind you of AND. I know that's a lowercase a. So that's something to get at. The other thing is the following. AND has another word when you have a contrasting AND 
we could use the word but. Okay, so people use their buts. Ugh, did I just say that? People use the word but when they want to contrast something. I found $50 this morning, but my car got ripped off. Okay, so we have two simple statements and I want to contrast it, so that's when we use the but. It would be silly for us to use it right here. I have a penny, but a quarter in my pocket. It just would not gel well. People would look at you funny. So we don't want to use the contrasting and, which is the but, just on any time we have to say an and. So there it is. There's our first operator and, and it's essential to logic. Let's talk about our next operator. And you may have guessed what it was going to be. It's the or. Okay. The operator or is called the disjunction. It is denoted by this symbol. Let's write the symbol down here and tell you what it's called. They call this a cup because I bet if you could hold it, you might be able to fill it up and take a drink out of it or whatever. I don't know why it's called a cup. Maybe because, uh, anyway, so sometimes it's called a cup and it is the disjunction. So let's take a look at our example here. P, cup, whoa, those are two words you don't really want to put in the same sentence. P in the cup. Your doctor tells you to do that, just get out of the office quickly. P, <laughs> might have to just edit this part out. Cup, Q. So I want you to write that in words. And what you're going to say is, I have a penny in my pocket, or I have a quarter in my pocket. If you want to be more efficient, like we did in the last example, you can say, I have a penny or a quarter in my pocket. So I'm going to just write out that one. I have a penny or a quarter in my pocket. Okay, so that's what those symbols mean. And this right here is the OR. So we have the cap, which is the AND, the cup, which is the OR, but it's the, it actually is the inclusive OR. Inclusive OR. Which means when you say this, I have a penny or a quarter in my pocket, it, could, it also means that you could have both of them in your pocket. It would be true if you had a penny and a quarter in your pocket and you said that. So there is something called the exclusive or, and we used it in our definition of a statement. And when we use the exclusive or in here, that's this or that, but not both. So a statement is a sentence that is either true or false. When we use the, the exclusive or, so that's the one I'm saying right here, this right here is the exclusive or because we see this word either. So this right here is it's exclusive or, which means does not include both. So that's not what this one is, okay? So we could talk about the exclusive or later on in logic. Um, the, well, the exclusive or, maybe how about this? I'll be here this time tomorrow or I'll be home sick this time tomorrow. Okay, so that's the exclusive or. When we use it in here, we'll use the word either. Okay, so notice there was no either written out here. This is the inclusive or, which means or both. Okay, our next operator that we're going to look at is the not. The operator not is called the negation. It is denoted by this right here, which is sometimes called a tilde. There's other 
things that people call this. And this right here just means not. Let's take a look at an example here. We put that in front of the letter. So what is this statement right here? It says tilde P. Well, it is not the case that I have a penny in my pocket. Well, we could say it that way, but it's not really simplified. What we're really gonna say is I do not have a penny in my pocket. So the not or the negation is the fancy way of saying not. It's not a connective. It doesn't connect two simple statements together. It's still an operator and that's what you do. So tilde P, I do not have a penny in my pocket. And so we have just covered the three fundamental operators of logic and or not. And I know some of you are like, wow, Joe, I already knew all this stuff. Well, that's cool. Then, you know, this section of logic 3.1 will probably be the simplest part of logic. So I think what we should do now is we should practice going from symbols to words. So we'll get more complicated ones than this. And we'll also practice going from words back to symbols. Yeah. And, and so you might have already known what an and or not happen to be, but you may not have done what we're about to do right now. So I wrote this all out. These video lectures sometimes are a little shorter than what we would do in class because when I teach this in class, I'm writing this all on the whiteboard. Okay, and so that takes a lot of time. I felt like that would be awkward if I was just writing this all out and humming or whatever in this video. So I decided to write it out before I started the video. Actually, it makes it a little easier. And when you do the test, um, chances are you're not writing out the problems again. Unless, of course, you're writing out your exams because you don't have a printer. So, But in any case, let's focus on what we have to do, the new part. Our example says, statement F is Bob is funny. Statement T, Bob is tall. Statement S, that's an S there, Bob is smart. Translate to symbols. Okay, so this is gonna be weird for some of you. Bob is tall or Bob is not smart. Okay, so we're gonna break it down into, here's a simple statement here, Bob is tall. And then we have the statement right here that has a not. Okay. So Bob is tall, we're gonna go ahead and put a T right there. Or, so we got to remember these things. The or happens to be the cup. T, and we have the cup. Bob is not smart. So Bob is smart is S, so we're going to go tilde S. This is probably unlike any math class you've ever taken. This is just crazy, isn't it? There's the answer. Let's go ahead and do another one. And maybe you want to pause the video and see if you can do the next two um, problems, two and three. Um, four and five are a little trickier. So some of you may say, I want to try those ones out too, but those ones are a little trickier and we'll get to those. Bob is smart, but he is not funny. So that but is the contrasting and and so let's write this out. Bob is smart. We see up there it is S. But there's the and. He is not funny. So we have one for Bob is funny. So we're going to go tilde F. Now after a while, I mean, I know this says S cap tilde F. Um, very soon, I'm just going to start calling these things what they are, S and not F. For me, that's really what I want to say when I see that. Let's do the next one. Bob is funny and tall. Okay. So Bob is funny and Bob is tall. 
That's really what this statement says, but they have the same sentence structure. So Bob is funny, that is F, and then we have an and, and we have tall. So there's that one right there. Okay, four and five. The reason I said they look a little weird is they're really, it they looks like it's the same statement. The only difference is where the comma is. See the comma right there and the comma right there. And you might say, ah, oh, comma shouldn't make any difference. Well, we'll talk about that as well. The comma in both of these happen to be grouping. It tells us where things are being grouped. Okay, so let's take a look at this. Bob is funny. Or tall and smart. Okay, so that looks a little, you know, I mean, that looks exactly what we wrote down. We are missing something here, and maybe you already know what it is. Look at this. Bob is funny or tall and smart. So it appears that the answer is the same on both of these, but it's not because the tall and smart on this one are grouped together. And so how do you group something together in math? You actually use parentheses. Now in problem number five, which ones are grouped together? The funny or tall? So we put parentheses around funny or tall and we'll box the answer. Now the way that you can see that those statements are different is coming up later on when we learn about truth tables. We can put this statement on a truth table and this statement on the truth table and they will have different results. But some of you are not satisfied with me waving my hand and saying, oh, well, those are different and we'll find out later. And then later comes and I never bring it up again. So that's, this is why I'm gonna say this one here. Look at problem number four. Bob is funny, or he's a tall, smart guy. Now, it could be that Bob is not smart. This statement allows for that. If Bob is a funny guy who's not smart, then this says Bob is funny, or tall, smart. And so if he's a funny guy who's not smart, this statement allows for it. It allows Bob to not be smart. But this statement, it says, Bob is funny or tall and smart. So if both of these statements are true, this last statement says Bob has to be absolutely smart because it says Bob is funny or tall. Oh, and by the way, he's smart. And then this one never says 100% that Bob has to be smart for the statement to be true. Now, some of you are going, whoa, do we have to figure this out in the homework? No, you just have to go from words to symbols. But I'm showing you that I was trying to tell you that these two statements, because of the comma, they really are different. Okay, so that happens to be five problems where we are going from words to symbols. Now we're going to do three problems where we go from symbols back to words. So here they are. New set of examples. Statement E is I passed English. H, I passed history. M, I passed math. Translate to words. So I'll actually, um, I don't want to give it away. So here's a tilde, an E, a cup, and an H. So pause the video. See if you can write out the statement. Okay, so what does this say? This says, not E. Not, I passed history. So how are we going to say not E? We're going to say, I did not pass English. I did not pass. That's weird, the placement that I did there, English. Now, I think this came up in another problem, and I didn't mention it. 
Can you use contractions? Can you say, I didn't pass English? Yes, you can. And I don't know what example it was. Oh, the one where I said, I do not have a penny in my pocket. I could have said, I don't have a penny in my pocket. So don't hesitate to use contractions. So tilde E is, I did not pass English. And then we have what? We have or, and then here's H. I passed history. I passed history. So here's my answer right here. Wow, I'm like boxing a whole sentence here. I did not pass English or I passed history. Now this comes up from time to time on a test where like someone has this and then they say, oh, I'm going to go ahead and shorten it, kind of like what we did in um, previous problems. They say, I, now I'm writing this in red. Okay, so pay attention here. I did not pass English or history. So that one is wrong. Why is that wrong? Because this not is saying not English, but it also is distributing to this, not history. Okay, so we don't want to try to, you know, I know they have the same sentence structure here, but if, if there's a negation on the first one and not on the second one, you don't want to try to shorten it because you're going to write something that does not mean this statement. So please do not do the red. Let's go ahead and say that this one is wrong. Okay. Now if the not is on the second, the negation is on the second statement, then you can um, speed things up and make it a little shorter. But when it's on the first one, you want to write it all out. So that's something to be careful about. Okay, so hopefully this is really obvious. You know, if you're looking at the PDF, you're not going to go, oh yeah, that's, that's good too. He has it written because I have a wrong kind of bolder. Hey, don't do that. The next one, pause the video and see if you can write out this statement. Okay, so what does this say? This says, I passed math and I did not pass English. So that's what it is. I passed math and I did not pass English. This is one place where you can use the contrasting and. So this is a place where you can use your but. I passed math, but I, I'll use a contraction here, didn't pass English. Now, some of you might be thinking, well, what if I'm taking a test and I just forget to use the but? I passed math and I didn't pass English. It would be acceptable, okay? So you wouldn't get any points off on this. Now, this is one where we can, because the not is on the second part, we could have actually been more efficient and said, I passed math. It's not spaced out very good there, but not English. And that not does not uh, not, it's not. The, the not does not distribute to the first part because it's, it's on that part there. So both the blue ones are acceptable. I passed math, but not English. Let's go ahead and do the last problem that's of this type where we have symbols and we want to um, translate to words. You can pause the video and see if you can do this one on your own. Okay, here it goes. This says, I passed English or I passed history. That's what it says in the parentheses. And we'll shorten it. I passed English or history.
And then notice, after we say that, there's an and there. And I didn't pass math. Well, here's the deal. Because we have the parentheses, we should group these ones together using a comma. Now we're going to write our and. But look at this. There's a contrast here, so you could use the but. I passed English or history, but not math. If you want to say, but I did not pass math, great. Or you, maybe you said, and I did not pass math, that's great as well. So there is the answer to the problem. So logic really is weird. You're taking a math class and look what we're doing. Um, this will be the part of the class where there's the most words and sentences. And then when we get back to chapter 3, no, we are in chapter 3. I don't know. When we get to the next chapter, chapter 4, it's going to um, take a turn back to some numbers. Okay, so you'll get stuff like this in your homework that asks you to do something like this. Write the conjunction of I'm cold, I'm hungry. What's the conjunction again? The conjunction is the and. I'm cold and I'm hungry. Or you could just say I'm cold and hungry. If they ask you to write the disjunction of those two statements, then it would be I'm cold or hungry. But this one said conjunction. One other thing that I want to point out is some of you may remember they made these cartoons in the 1970s called Schoolhouse Rock and I guess they were like well let's motivate students to get all excited about arithmetic and English and they had one called conjunction junction what's your function and in that case they were calling conjunctions ands ors and a lot more okay so that's different than what we're doing here in logic a conjunction in logic is just the and or the contrasting and, which is the but. Okay, so you know some of you might have been thinking, wait a minute, I remember in my, I remember something about this being ands, ors, and other things, um, but not in logic. Logic, it is the and. Okay. So in your homework, they can ask you to write the conjunction of some statements. Uh, there has to be two statements to write the conjunction of or disjunction. And they'll also, in your homework, ask you to write the negation of some statements. So let's go ahead and see what we have here. Write the negation of these statements. And so what I'm going to do so I'm going to start off with this one. I'm happy. And the negation of this is I'm not happy. Okay. So there it is. Now some of you, I don't know who, I don't even really know you guys because this has been a video class. There's some email interchange. Well, when I teach this face-to-face, -face, there's always like someone who raises their hand and they say, oh, I'm happy. The negation has to be, I'm sad. And notice I'm writing it in red. So that is actually not the negation. So this right here is wrong. Okay, now we have to explain ourselves why that is wrong. Well, here it is. Here it goes. I'm happy. Let's just try to make it simple. Looks like this. Okay, so there's a happy face. There's other things you can be. You can be sad, which, yeah, that's what that one is there. And then here's the third one. You could just be neutral. You're not happy. You're not sad. So when 
they ask you to write the negation, here is the original statement. The negation should cover all other situations. This is all other situations right here. This, which I'm sad is part of that. But I'm sad is not part of this. So when you know we start off with our statement, I'm happy, we've covered that base. The negation should cover all the other bases. Okay, so I'm not happy, it's right there. This diagram is going to help us when we start talking about dogs um, later in this video. Okay, so when someone asks you to write the negation, lots of times we like to put a not in there. So I'm not happy. But look at this one right here. It says I'm not going. So the negation on that, we're not going to say I'm not not going. We are going to say for the negation for problem number two, I'm going. Logic does get a little more challenging than this. So, you know, if you're sitting there going, oh man, I hate this, then I don't know what to say. You can always turn off the video. 1 plus 2 equals 3. Okay. Well, just think about that. Like, if you had to write that out in words, 1 plus 2 equals 3. What's the negation of that? It would be 1 plus 2 does not equal 3. So we'll write that out in symbols. You can write it out in words if you want. I'm going to say 1 plus 2. And do we have a sign for does not equal? And the answer is yeah. It's this guy right here. Does not equal 3. There it is. So there's the negation. Now, one thing to realize about the negation is you've got a statement right here that's true, its negation is going to be false. Okay. We'll get more into truth values in the next lecture. Okay, what is the negation of 2 times 2 does not equal 5? Well, it's kind of like this. So there's a not in the statement. You're going to say 2 times 2 equals 5. And so there is the negation. Let's go ahead and continue with these. So before we do number five, I'll give you some more definitions. The following words are universal quantifiers. All, every, no, none. You don't have to memorize this definition it won't even come up. I think um, these will come up in your homework, but I'm just telling you what they're called. The following word is an existential um, quantifier, sum. So let's take a look at our next example. What are we doing with our examples? We are writing the negation. And so I am writing the negation of all dogs go to heaven. Okay. So you might have already done this in another class where you had to write negation of statements. One popular answer for this, when I say write the negation, is the following. No dogs go to heaven. And you're probably thinking to yourself, Joe, you're writing it in red. What does that mean? There seems to be a pattern here. That means that this is wrong. So let's go ahead and do the little diagram, dogs and heaven, like I did with the happy face. And so without turning this into a class on religion, I'm going to try to make it simple. I'm going to make a cloud. I'm going to say that symbolizes heaven. And I'm going to um, say my, the, I'm going to write perhaps seven D's. And I'm going to put them all in the cloud. All dogs go to heaven. Okay. No dogs go to heaven looks like this.
and I'm going to put the dogs outside the cloud. Okay, so that's no dogs get to heaven. Okay, which was wrong. Well, here's the first base. It covers that. That's our original statement, all dogs go to heaven. Is there another situation that we can draw with dogs in heaven? Oh, by the way, the first time I did this, I actually drew some flames below and put the dogs down there and I, my class chased me across campus with pitchforks and torches and there was no way I was going to put the flames on this time. Um, okay, so we could have another situation here where some of the dogs are in the cloud and then some you know which um, let me just put a box around this some of you know like the ones that would bite the mailman or whatever and now we're saying is it, is getting to heaven based on good works and then we're turning it back into a religion class um, some dogs did not make it so these are the three scenarios that you can have you can't tell me another scenario and I know what some of you are thinking yeah you can put one of the D's in there and then the other six outside the cloud well that's kind of this saying that there's some in there some outside so our negation of all dogs go to heaven which is this picture here has to cover both of these pictures and both of these pictures are not covered by no dogs go to heaven because we have this here we have to cover that so there are a few ways of doing this, all dogs go to heaven. One is this, not all dogs go to heaven. And that does cover scenario two and scenario three. There's actually a better way of doing this because it's going to gel up with a chart that I'm going to show you. And that is some dogs do not go to heaven. I'm going to box that one because that's the best one in terms of... Um, simplifying this. Some dogs do not go to heaven and some of you do like the one above but this is really going to help out. So what really just happened in this statement? It's almost like we ripped the all out of the original statement and we replaced it with a sum and later on down the line we kind of also put a negation. We put the not in there. And so you know, you're thinking, well, when I have to do my homework, do I have to draw pictures for all my problems? Absolutely not. What we're going to do is you will have a statement and if it has an all in it, then the negation will have a sum dot 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 not now this little chart I'm not going to finish here we'll be on the next page but if it has a some not in it you're going to rip out the sum and not replace the sum with what an all because here's something that we didn't really say, but the negation of this statement, some dogs do not go to heaven, happens to be all dogs go to heaven. And so let's go ahead and show you the chart before we concentrate on the next three examples and we are almost done with this section. So here's my chart. Now I actually put this in red, I'm not going to make an arrow pointing to that saying that's wrong. This is correct, I was thinking on oh, negation, red, whatever, I, I don't know why I picked that color. Negation of all is some not. Negation of some not is all. And that's why I said that replacing the all with the some not is preferred because you're going to get some going the other way. Now here's some that we didn't talk about, the negation of some 
is no or none. And negation of no is some. And so this takes care of our, um, our universal quantifiers and the existential quantifiers. And let's go ahead and do some of these problems. So these are the last problems that we're doing here for this lecture. Some students do not take Math 230. We're going to write the negation of that. So notice what I have here. I have a sum and a not. Those get ripped out and the sum gets replaced with an all. It's kind of funny, I have this chart that has four things on it. It really only needs two. It only needs this first one and this third one because you can go back and forth. So all students do take Math 230 or we can say all students, we don't have to put that do in there, all students take Math 230. Okay, you might want to pause the video and see if you can write the negation of um, statement 7 and statement 8. No man is an island. So I see no in there. I look at my chart. No gets replaced with some. So I'm going to write the negation as some man is an island. Another acceptable answer would be some men are islands. This is not making sense anymore. Some men are islands. What are we saying? Well, um, well, we've we've come off this phrase, no man is an island, you know, about isolation. And we don't want to turn this into an English class and talk about well, what does that really mean and is that really true? We're just saying here's a statement Here's its negation. Let's go ahead and do this one. Some animals are dirty. You gotta be careful with the sum because you wanna make sure there's, n you don't see a knot down here. Okay, so I don't see a knot like we did up here. So I know I'm going off this third one where I replaced the sum with no. So, no animals are dirty. No animals are dirty is the negation. You could say no animal is dirty. That would be acceptable as well. Because I had a lot of these longer things written out, definitions and all that stuff, this lecture is shorter than regular. So don't think they'll always be short. Once we get back to um, number systems and binary, they might be the, the hour and a half. But this one I think is even going to go less than an hour. Let's go ahead and answer our puzzle now. The puzzle says you have these two letter words and you're trying to find out what familiar word is DC Abe. So, you know, you might be looking at this right here and say, hey, Abe, I have an Uncle Abe or whatever. Well, this is just one of those things where you have to kind of plow through this. Um, there are different answers for this. The best answer for this is D is an H, etc. So the weird part about this is an E is an E. And if you go back and look at this, AB is us. So that's a word. And then um, BC is so, so a needle pulling thread. I probably shouldn't have said that. And then CD is O, and then DE is he. So I think there are other answers. This completes section 3.1 statements 
You guys have a good day, and I'll see you in the next video.